Hello, Kara students. In this session, we'll try to understand the role which strategy has to play in your success in this particular test, which is the common admission test. Remember, this is not just a test of math and English. This is a test of managerial skills. This is a test of those skills which you need to apply on a regular daily basis as a manager. And strategy is one of the most important ingredients of this particular skill set. So let's try to see how best you can apply a strategy to solve questions. And uh, before we actually do it, we need to appreciate that strategy is the sequence of steps which you need to solve a problem. More is the number of steps, more is the time required of you to solve the question. Uh, also understand that putting in too many steps unnecessarily is also not required. So you need to strike a balance between the two and, and an optimal uh, approach has to be uh, devised so that you're able to get the question in the right time and that you're able to do well in the test. Now let's try to look at two levels of questions, an easy level and a difficult level. Now, uh, the level of these questions uh, is based on the feedback given by the student community over the years. We also understand that what is easy for someone may be difficult for the other someone, but this is based on averaging the feedback which we got from uh, different students over the years. So let's take a look at this question first, the easy level question. AB is a two digit number and CCB is a three digit number such that AB whole square is equal to CCB, where CCB is greater than 300. What is the value of B? The options given are 0, 1, 5, and 6. Now let's try to apply uh, how many steps uh, are required of this particular task and which all steps should these be. So the starting point for us is that AB whole square, AB whole square is equal to CCB. Now immediately your understanding from this equation should be that B square is ending in B. So which are those digits which when squared will end in the same respective digit? If you look at the 10 digits of the decimal system, the only such digits are 0, 1, 5 and 6, which means that the value of B should be one of these. Now, if you look at the options, the options have all these four values, 0, 1, 5 and 6, which means that step number 2 is required. Had the options been such that only one of these four was in the options and the other three options uh, would have been three other values, then the answer would have been easy to arrive at and we uh, were not required to graduate to the next step. However, in this scenario, step number two is required. So step number two is that CCB is a three digit number, which is more than 300. Now we know that CCB is a perfect square and it's more than 300 and less than 1000. So the first such value is 324, which is the square of 18, because 17 square is less than 300. And the last such value is 961, which is the square of 31. So in the given conditions, we understand that AB takes a value between 18 and 31. Why? Because CCB takes a value between 324 and 961. So what we get till now is that AB is a number which is between 18 and 31. Now if we combine this input with this input, as in the number is between 18 and 31 and B is either a 0, a 1, a 5 or a 6. Combining these two, the possible values which AB can take, 20, 21, 25, 26, and 30. Out of these five values, only 21 is that number, which when squared will end in 1. So 21 squared 
is equal to 441 or AB whole square is equal to CCB. So we've been able to get the values of A, B and C as 2, 1 and 4 respectively. And going back to the options, we understand that the answer is therefore option number 2, which is 1. So this was, uh, this was a case where the question was relatively easier and uh, only two steps were required of you to solve the question. Uh, and the step, uh, the number of steps would have been even, even less had the options been slightly different. Let's try to look at uh, how we can apply this word called strategy to a question which is slightly elevated or which is a difficult level question based on the feedback from the student community. If A factorial plus B factorial plus C factorial is equal to ABC, where A, B and C are distinct decimal digits, find B. The options given are 0, 1, 4 and 5. Now, I can bet on this that uh, most of the students would have a lever to attempt this question because of the length of the question. There are just two lines to be read and wherever the effort in terms of reading is less, uh, that certainly qualifies as, uh, one, uh, as an attempt by the students. However, these two lines, uh, they put you through a lot of challenge because it's not easy to arrive at the value of B prima facie. And uh, most of the students, when they start working on the question, they'll find that uh, there is an apparent uh, insufficiency of data. So uh, they spend some time and they pull out of the question and uh, they increase their opportunity cost. However, the ones who apply the right strategy would be able to reach at the answer also. So let's look at the, the strategy for this question. The given equation is that the sum of these three factorials is equal to ABC. So on the left hand side, we have the sum of three factorials. On the right hand side, we have a three digit number, which means that none of these A, B and C can take a value of seven or more. Because the minute you get a seven, an eight or a nine, you get a four digit number or more on the right hand side. For example, if you take 7 as one of uh, these variables, 7 factorial will give you a 5040, which is a four digit number. Hence, 7 cannot be there in the system. And for the same logic, 8 and 9 are also eliminated. So uh, the initial try and error tells us that 7, 8, 9 are eliminated. We look at the options and the options do not have any of these as a value, which means that we need to graduate to the next step. Now, this is what we need to communicate and, and put across that the requirement of the next step depends on uh, the, the level at which you are in terms of solving the question. And, and, and therefore, you have to look, uh, look at the options all this way, because the effort which you need to put, put in is contextual. It depends on the the context, it depends on the options at hand. In our case, since uh, 7, 8, and 9 are not there in the options, we graduate to the next level, the next step. Now, the next step is trying to understand whether 6 is a possible value on the left-hand side. The minute you get a 6 on the left-hand side, you get a 6 factorial, which gives you a 720, which means you have a number on the right-hand side which is more than 720 because you have to add two more factorials to it. So the minute you get this, you are able to understand that your A will take a value of 7, 8 or a 9, which is not possible, which we just uh, decided a while back, which means that 6 is also not a possible value on the left hand side for any of these variables. So 6, 7, 8 and 9. These four digits are eliminated. Now we inspect for the next digit, which is five. Is five a possible value for any of these? In fact, five is mandatory on the left hand side because if we do not get a five, the maximum value without a five would be four factorial plus three factorial 
plus 2 factorial, not necessarily in this order, which gives you a 24 plus 6, 30 plus 2, 32, which means that your right hand side is only a two digit number, which is not possible because your ABC is given to be a three digit number. Hence, a 5 is imperative in the system. And if this happens, the maximum value which ABC can take will be 5 factorial plus 4 factorial plus 3 factorial, which makes it a 120 plus 24 plus 6, which is 150, which means that the maximum value which ABC can take is 150. And 150 is also not possible because it does not satisfy the given equation. So the number ABC takes a value less than 150 and more than 100, which means that the value of A will be equal to 1. Now, till this point, we decide that 6, 7, 8, 9 are eliminated. The value of A is 1 and 5 is definitely there on the left hand side. And since your ABC takes a value which is less than 150. So obviously B cannot be 5, C has to be 5, which means the equation becomes 1 factorial plus B factorial plus 5 factorial is equal to 1 B 5. And the possible values which B can take 0, 2, 3, and 4. Why? Because A, B, C are all distinct. So 1 and 5 are eliminated. 6 and above are also eliminated. We are left with these four values for this particular equation. So what is required of you now is to just plug in these values and see which one satisfies the equation. So you will find that only 4 is able to satisfy this equation, which therefore becomes 1 factorial plus 4 factorial plus 5 factorial, which is 145. So this is the equation which gives you the values of A, B and C as 1, 4 and 5 respectively. And you're able to understand that the uh, question requires you to find the value of B. Therefore, the answer is option number 3. Now, this question required uh, uh, these many steps because the options were planted in a certain way. So your strategy to a large extent depends on the options at hand, depends on the approach which you devise to solve the question, so, uh, and, and depends on the topic, uh, the comfort level which you have with the topic, etc., etc. So strategy has a huge role to play in your uh, final outcome, and uh, it decides uh, whether you were able to solve the question in the given time or not. And the optimal time uh, is, is such that you do not incur an opportunity cost with respect to other questions in the test. So this is how strategy helps you to understand the difference between uh, an easy level question and a difficult level question and helps you to solve these questions strategically, systematically, sequentially. We hope that this video has been able to give you an insight into the importance of this all important skill, which is uh, strategy. Thank you and best wishes.